Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at what I call a college laptop. This is the Asus VivoBook S14. It is $799, but is actually pretty well equipped for the price. So inside is an i7-8550U processor. That's nice to see, a quad-core chip and a GTX MX150 GPU from NVIDIA, so it can do some game playing in addition to uh, work and all the boring stuff. So we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from ASUS. So when we're done with this, we send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Really nice display on this, a 14-inch 1080p display, IPS with really nice viewing angles. No touchscreen on it or anything like that, but it does look nice and sharp with good color decent brightness on it too, so that was nice on a uh, relatively low-cost mid-range laptop. Plastic casing, so it's not going to have any fancy metal on it, but it is very lightweight, 2.9 pounds or 1.3 kilograms, uh, so that isn't too bad there. Again, it's got the quad-core i7 and the MX150, 8 gigabytes of RAM built in and 256 gigabytes of M2 SATA SSD storage on board. We took it apart on the extras channel the other day, so you can see inside of it, you can upgrade the RAM by adding another stick. Uh, so the eight gigs on this one are soldered onto the board, and you can add another eight if you wish to get to 16 by dropping in a DDR4 RAM module on here. Not that expensive to do, pretty easy to do. And in addition to swapping out the uh, M2 drive, you can also add in a regular SATA hard drive too. So a you know, two and a half inch notebook SSD drive uh, should fit nicely on here as well. So you do have a lot of options for upgrades on this one. You can't do the processor or the GPU, of course, but you can get more memory and storage put into it. Very easy to get into it just by taking the uh, bottom panel off here and you're good to go on that. Now there are a good number of ports on the side of the laptop, including a full-size USB 3 port here, a full-size HDMI output for connecting external displays. You can drive 4K displays out of this. Uh, there's also a USB Type-C port. Uh, this, though, apparently is only doing data. We were not able to get it to work with external displays in our testing. Maybe we've got some defective one, but there's no display output that we were able to get through this port. It also doesn't support power delivery. So if you have one of those new docking stations that allows you to plug in a single cable and get power and video and everything hooked up, uh, it's not going to give you that uh, flexibility with this particular configuration. You still need to use the power adapter on the side. Uh, you also have a combo headphone microphone jack over there. On the other side, you've got another two USB 3 ports as well as an SD card slot for a full-size SD card, but they do stick out a bit there, so this will be a temporary uh, swap out your photos and remove kind of deal there. Uh, the keyboard isn't bad. The keys are a little smaller than I would like. They are chiclet style. Uh, they're backlit though, white backlighting, so you do have the ability to see the keyboard in the dark. Not bad, but I would have liked a larger keyboard just because I am not a big fan of these smaller keys and I wasn't typing as well on this as I usually do on similarly sized laptops. So just bear that in mind if you are particular about your keyboards. Uh, you may have some issues with the key sizing here, but decent travel on the keys. It does feel relatively comfortable. It's just for me, I like a little larger key to type on. Trackpad isn't bad here. It is a click pad. Uh, there's also a fingerprint reader embedded on it for doing Windows hello and that sort of thing. Uh, it's got some speakers here at the bottom, stereo speakers. They are downward firing. Not bad, a little tinny, but uh, good enough for doing conferencing and that sort of thing. But if you do want better audio quality, of course, uh, you'll want to attach up some headphones, either directly to that port on the side or via USB. Battery life in our testing comes in kind of in the mid-range, about six to seven hours, and that is doing web browsing and email and some video watching perhaps. But if you're doing more higher end tasks that might make use of that GPU, uh, you will see significantly less battery life. That's not uncommon with a laptop with a GPU built in, uh, but it will switch that GPU off when it's not needed to give you uh, better battery life throughout the day. But if you do intend to play games on it and whatnot, uh, my suggestion is to plug it in. So let's take a look now at performance. We'll begin with my YouTube channel running a 1080p 60 video file and everything seems to be working just fine from that standpoint. So great performance on that front. 
Uh, we also did some web browsing. The NASA.gov page here you can see loads up very, very quickly, thanks in part to the fact that we've got the i7 processor on here, but also it has a uh, AC 2x2 radio built in, so no issues with the basic kind of stuff that you're going to be doing on the laptop. Uh, we also ran the speedometer benchmark test, and on the 1.0 version of that, we got a score of 188, which is great. Uh, comes in right around where some of the more expensive laptops came in with the same processor. We also ran the 2.0 version of that test, which came in at 105.5. And then we also ran Microsoft Word on it for the heck of it. And as you can see, it does all the basic Word and Excel and other tasks without any issues. So from the standpoint of getting work done in school, not a problem here. It seems to be keeping up with all of that. But let's move on now to some more fun stuff, and that is gaming. So let's start off with GTA 5, and we used the GeForce recommended settings to run it at 1080p, and we were able to get up to about 60 frames per second, sometimes a little higher. Uh, so you should be able to get a decent frame rate out of this. Of course, good frame rate means you'll probably have to make some image quality reductions along the way, so it's always going to be a balancing act, but you can get games to run at decent frame rates on here uh, with this relatively low-end GPU. Uh, we also ran Rocket League at 1080p using those same GeForce recommended settings, and there we were getting uh, up to 60 frames per second, sometimes dipping down into the high 50s, but more or less it was a good Rocket League experience and running as we would expect it to on this hardware configuration. So here we are playing Fortnite, and what I've done here is set the resolution to 1080p and all the settings to medium, and I'm running at about 45 frames per second, give or take, uh, sometimes it's creeping up into the 50s. I think if you want to get uh, 60, you'll have to turn down some of the visual settings again uh, at 1080p, or you can run with the GeForce recommended settings at uh, 720p and get a very consistent 60 frames per second. So a lot of times it'll vary based on what's going on in the game and everything as to what kind of uh, frame rate you will see, but generally 45 to 50 with those medium settings at 1080p is what I'm getting here. So not bad and certainly a good uh, Fortnite experience if you're looking to play it every once in a while on your laptop. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy test, we got a score of 1,099, and its graphical performance is within the margin of error of other MX150 devices that we've looked at, uh, namely the Acer A515 from last year. It's coming in around where that one does because it has the same GPU, but we're doing a little bit better on the CPU test because we do have a quad-core i7 now on this one. So all in uh, performance is where I would expect it to be. And if you've been doing research on the MX150 GPU and seeing different types of game performance with that chip, uh, you should expect to see that performance in action on this laptop here. We also investigated its thermals. We ran the 3D Mark stress test, which runs a pretty intensive benchmark over and over again. Uh, there we got a score of 94%. Uh, but we were not able to get the app to receive any thermal data as far as temperature is concerned from the CPU or the GPU. But 94% indicates that you will see some thermal throttling the more you push this computer. Not significantly so, but it doesn't uh, get the 97% passing grade on that test, but still I think it's doable for the price point and what it has equipped. So generally you're going to be in good shape there. And I was uh, pleased to see that they left the uh, bottom without any vents because a lot of times these new laptops are putting the air intakes on the bottom here so you can't always keep it on your lap and get good performance. Uh, this one is doing all of its venting through uh, underneath the hinge here. So all uh, together, I think, from the cooling standpoint, it isn't bad. Uh, there is a single fan in here. Uh, it is not too noisy. You'll certainly hear it when you're playing games on it. It will be running, but uh, we have certainly encountered laptops that are noisier. So the fan isn't bad, not all that distracting, and generally it doesn't come on all that much, or at least all that loudly, when you're doing uh, non-gaming tasks. So you might hear it kick on every once in a while if your web page is doing something a little bit more intensive, but generally uh, the fan has not been a distraction for me. And one last thing to take a look at, and that is Kodi and decoding some high-end video. So we always like to take a look at the Jellyfish test file, 4K, 140 megabits per second, 10-bit HEVC, and it seems to be playing back just fine on here as we would expect it to on these newer Intel processors. And altogether, I think this is a pretty good value. I like the display, I like the size, I like the fact that it has a 
the GPU. So for about $800, you're getting a PC that performs as well as perhaps a $2,000 laptop might. Uh, it's not as pretty as some of those might be, but it's also not a clunker either. And we've seen a lot of clunkers come in at around this price point that are big and heavy. Uh, this one is pretty thin and light, and I think a pretty good deal if you're looking for a laptop with uh, some decent performance on board. So that's going to do it for uh, the Asus VivoBook S14. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.